Question B. After a couple of hours, the specks are still observed, showing that the dust particles have not fallen to the floor. Explain why the dust particles have not fallen to the floor. You may draw a label diagram to help your explanation. As we said before, the dust particles that are spread in air are being hit by air molecules randomly from all directions, so they are pushed to the left direction as well as they are being hit to the right, and they move up as well as they move down. So there will be no net direction of motion for the dust particles. That's why they stay suspended in air. The tiny fast moving air molecules hit the large heavy and slow dust particles randomly from all directions. So they move up as well as they move down. Two marks are for air molecules hit dust particles in all directions. Or you can say move it in all directions. This is for one mark. The second mark is for just as likely to be up as down. The two marks also can be given for the diagram. Question C. On another day, the temperature of the room is only 10 degrees Celsius. All other conditions are the same, and the specks of light are again observed. Suggest any differences that you would expect in the movement of the specks when the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius compared to before. So, you need to remember that the temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. Now, temperature has decreased to 10 degrees Celsius. This means that it becomes colder as the temperature decreased. Of course, this will cause the air molecules to be slower. So, they will hit the dust particles with less force and less energy. So, the random motion will be shorter distances and slower than before. We can say that the random movement of the bright specks will be seen shorter distances and slower than at higher temperature. One mark by the mark scheme for random movement smaller or slower movement or less energy or movement decreases. Any one of these is for only one mark.